I, I work for b and my name's Adam. Um, I look after the maintenance for our stores, but also the facilities management for um, our SSA building. And this has kind of come out of the situation I've walked into, having been promoted to look after um, the SSO team, um, and the fact that it's a very fractured team. Now, Avengers isn't new to being used for teamwork presentations and everything else, but actually the presentation really isn't about teamwork, it's about the value of teams. So it's how you, you can pull them together. Not that the fact the Avengers tells you how to look really good in spandex, and I can't tell you how to do that, unfortunately, and I didn't try today, but I did bring my red pants and then thought better of it as well. So, become the FM. There is someone called Fantastic Man in the world, um, and to be honest, I think that's what FM has tried to be. They try and do everything themselves. They are, you know, the expert in this, the expert in that, the expert in something else. And actually they try and ride in on their white horse occasionally and sort everyone's problems out um, without thinking and looking back. So there is a man called Fantastic out there. Um, and I find when FMers get promoted, they, they kind of look at the power that they have and the influence that they kind of have and possibly don't go on their journey using it in the right way. So they manage things rather than leading. So I think FM has the power to do the most incredible things. I still have what I like is a power, but my power should be somewhere else. It shouldn't be for what I do, so I shouldn't be Mr. Fantastic Man. The first stage of that journey, unfortunately, is going to have to be putting your ego aside. So why do you go to work? Why do you do what you do? What is it about you that's impacting? And as you can see there, the one thing about Iron Man, the problem that Iron Man has is his ego. His ego, when he started the film, was huge. But I have to say, when I started and I got my first senior role, my ego was my problem. I thought I had power. I thought I had, I'd made it. And actually, I was right at the beginning of my, my journey. So I became head of general services at Zara at the age of um, 32. And I left five years later, actually feeling quite disappointed with my time there. Um, I hadn't built a team. Um, I became Mr. Fantastic Man. And actually it became really unsustainable and everything else that goes along with it. And if you go back to the Iron Man story, Robert Downey Jr. made all kinds of demands when he walked into the film. The script's gotta be about me, this has gotta be about Iron Man. Iron Man's the most important character and by the time he'd read the script, he changed every single one of his demands and they all disappeared. The reason why they disappeared is because he realized that bringing every one of these superheroes together as and assembling them was better than just Iron Man story on its own. And I've said a couple of times, I think throughout my, my career over the last well few years, is I'm not important. What I do is, and the role that I play in it is really important. But me as a person, my success will become as a success of the collective rather than me as, a, as an individual. I guess, I was quite lucky when I was younger um, because I learned my weaknesses quite early on. And it's a shame that I didn't understand that when I went into Zara because at the age of five, I was diagnosed with dyslexia. And people don't understand the difference and the struggles you'll go through with something like dyslexia. And I put that aside over those years, but I didn't learn what it meant until I could actually turn around to a business and say that I suffered from a learning difficulty. And I could only do that when I realized I had to get rid of my ego. And once I got rid of my ego, my world started moving in a very different direction. So, here comes Hawkeye. We all can laugh and joke about Hawkeye, can't we? 
he's useless. I mean, he's got really no super powers, is he? Doesn't really add anything to the team. He's kind of a butt of everyone's jokes. And then suddenly, when you need someone to scope something out from miles away and then shoot an alien, who turns up with his bow and arrow? Hawkeye. And it's a lesson for all of us to understand what's really important about a team. There are so many different skill sets, I think is the word that we need to build a team. And Hawkeye had a fundamental part to play in that team. We just didn't think he was that super at the time. Um, but FM, so one minute, we're accountants. And I know someone said earlier that we weren't very good at it. Some of us have some of the biggest budgets um, in our company and we need to be accountants. Then we need to have technical knowledge. Then we need to know about customer service. Then we need to know about cleaning. We need to know about cooking. We need to know about receptions. We need to know about post rooms. We need to have an awful lot of things, don't we, to run our day-to-day our -day job. And if I go back to Mr. Fantastic as a person, it's difficult to know everything. But actually, a team can know everything because you put them together in the right way. So it's really important to choose the right team members. So if I look at Avengers, they don't have super speed in there. So Flash could be a really good person to come into that team. I don't think anyone can read minds. So stealing a bit of X-Men would be absolutely brilliant and, and getting that into the team. And I think the whole part of when we go out to recruit our teams is we look at ourselves and try and pick ourselves to work with when we should really be looking and seeking out the diversity, especially in FM. Because if I go back to the beginning of all those things that we should know, the biggest problem is we can't know them all. So we need to go out and get diversity. And that fundamental change in the way that we recruit our teams should be able to bring us the right balance. Because the right balance is absolutely key. So we need some warriors. We need some people that hide and sneak around and do things in the quiet. And actually, come back to the first point, we need Hawkeye. No matter what anyone says about how good he is an Avenger, we need him in our team. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. I told you my weakness. I'm not ashamed now that I get my P's and Q's and B's and D's and I lose words in pages and it is a real struggle to short-term memory and learn. So when I go and look for my team, what do I look for? Because I now believe in the weaknesses I have and I understand them and I've accepted them, I can go and look for people that fundamentally are different to me and make my team that I then look after complete. Because don't be ashamed of your weaknesses. Because as it says here, Steve Rogers cannot pick up Thor's mighty hammer and that is okay. You know, because let's be honest, when Thor tried to attack him, it didn't really work because he picked up his shield. And as you can see, um, the difference of that. And if you even go back to the beginning, so Captain America has completely different world values um, to Iron Man. They're completely different spectrums of people. Um, and they don't come together very easily. But actually, they work really well as a team. Until you take the third one, which I've never got in the first place, Civil War, but you know, we'll stick with the first two. Um, and I don't think we, when we're recruiting our teams, actually take into account what we're getting and the weaknesses, and we try and hide what we're not very good at. And actually, sometimes we should just be embracing what we're really good at and what we're not good at, and that helps us guide um, people through a journey. And my team is really interesting. So we were talking about this last night. Um, I've got a bit of a reputation in my office, which is a bit strange of hunting down middle-aged women. Um, and <laughs> my, I turned around and said, I need a team of grown-ups, probably because I wasn't one myself because I sit there watching Avengers. Um, and I need people that don't have an ego, that have a desire to be successful, that people that want the chance to be something more than they are. So I have three wonderful ladies in my team. Um, that have gone from coordinator roles to now ones leading um, contract management. 
Nobody knew this lady that sat in the corner had a whole history of insurance um, background, dealing with legal lawyers and everything else. And that made it really easy for me to start getting contracts passed through my legal team and my business by just plucking this person out. Their salary has pretty much doubled um, since they've joined me. And that's an amazing thing. So the company have also backed that person. That person is 62, I hope I've got that right. And last year, she was on the Aspire program, was one of the 40 top people within B&Q that have a projected future at 62. She was a lady that sat in the corner that no one spoke to really. And I was actually asked my opinion of her at one point through an appraisal and the person was gonna give her a one, you know, because they just didn't value anything that she did. And I have another lady who is now in charge of energy and she was the energy coordinator. And again, same thing, it's the desire, the passion, and everything else. They had their weaknesses, but I could fill those gaps. The rest of the team could fill those gaps and we could teach them. So you've got to understand what you have. And I think my internal team is uh, a massive example of that. If I look at the team I've inherited, I don't think they know anything about their strengths or weaknesses or how to work as, as one. So, how do you solve your problems? To be honest, I just put this in there because I quite like the, the, the gif that, you know, and I could probably stand here and watch it about 20 times because it's quite funny. Um, but, and so that means I had to put fist in it, which obviously nobody ever sorts their problems out with their fists. Um, but it's, I've been in situations where screaming and shouting is what people think are giving people instructions and, um, I've been in situations where people make people feel really small about themselves. And I think as a leader, we should be there and offer, it doesn't matter what's happened, respect, help, guidance, all the way through what we do. And if we ever, ever take an emotional stance to a situation, we're doing something that's really wrong. Um, we should be, as leaders, be able to clear our mind of our emotional aspects and be able to deal with the facts and what's in there. And again, make a solution and I think sometimes it really helps if a team has a common goal you know very very don't start a war until you know what you're fighting for it's really um, clear so it, we the FM team didn't know who they were when I joined I certainly didn't know what they were meant to be doing or how they were meant to be doing it and where they were meant to be doing it it just wasn't right so I locked him in the room for eight hours and it was really interesting to work out what our vision was and what our purpose was what did we want to be famous for and it was long it was quite tiring but we got there in the end and do you know what they're, they're, they want to be famous for they want to be famous for helping other people and helping the business be successful that's it so they want to be the team that just turn around and listen to someone's problem and try and help them with a solution to do it. And I think that's, if you can achieve that in FM across the board, you don't need to think about anything else. If you just understand that your function is there to help, doesn't matter what it is, then you're on to, to being a very, very successful team. Team relationships are, are really important, uh, but they're not the end of the world. You will have people that you get on with on a personal perspective. You'll have people that you really don't get on with on a personal perspective. But that doesn't mean they're not right for your team. Just because you personally wouldn't necessarily go for a drink with them down the pub or have your family spend time together. Um, nobody comes and hugs me. And I quite like that because I don't like to be hugged. And other people in my team love to be hugged. And our, our leadership style has to change and adapt for everyone that's in there. And my team is built up of FMers for 20 years, built up from people that have been in the industry for five minutes. It's built up of every single nationality I could even think of, um, to be perfectly honest. And all of them have the common goal. So all of them know what they're working towards and they understand that their relationship, if their personal relationship with someone else impacts what they want to be, 
then it's the wrong thing to be doing. So they all have some form of relationship that works. Um, and it really helps to find people that believe in what you're doing. So if you go back to setting up, why have we built this team? Do we know our strengths and weaknesses? Do we understand what we're doing? Do we have a common belief? Their relationships will build exactly the same way and become very successful, even if they're not best friends. Um, and be honest what you bring. As I said earlier, don't hide what you can't do. So I've got, as I say, I've got a brilliant person that does all my contracts, helps me with legal things. I've got an absolutely fantastic analyst who can make anything out of data and spreadsheets. I can't do that. They can do that. I have someone that is great at communication with builders. Um, probably wouldn't put them in front of my board. But it doesn't make any difference. They can communicate in the right way. Um, and never ask them to do something that, that doesn't fit them. Now, if they want to grow and learn, you can help them grow and learn. But don't put them in a situation. So you're not going to send Hulk in, are you, to have a peace conversation with someone. You're just going to send him in to smash the place up and have a bit of fun. And again, I just like the GIF because it's quite cool. Um, but don't ask your teams to, to um, do things that you can't do. Um, and I think if we look at Iron Man, he's kind of the intelligence. You look at Captain America, he's got the moles, and then you look at Hulk. He's the muscle, isn't he? Um, but not one of them is more important than the other when it comes to saving the world from an alien invasion. Um, it is what it is. They have to have every single part of it. And as FM, if I go back to how many roles that we actually have to do, it's fundamental that we've got all those jigsaw pieces to be, to be successful. Um, consult your team on making decisions. Now, let's be honest, if Tony Stark had asked his team about what he was creating, it probably would not have been the, the creature it turned out to be that was out there to, to ruin the world. And I think, as I go back to it, it's about that vision and purpose. So if you're doing something like a, an investment program uh, or improving um, your workplace, don't go off and make the plan. Get your teams together. Tell them what your vision is and let them help you build it. Because if you're trusted in all their skills and you've brought them in to, to follow and fill the gaps that you don't have, um, absolutely, it, it becomes a better team. So I look at the amount of respect that my team get now from our store maintenance program. And it's, it's massive. We've been up for awards. We've had people on the Aspire program. Um, we have the right level of funding um, to do our job. We have got a lot more to do, but absolutely everything is starting to fall in place. And that's not because of me. That's not because I stood there and went, please, can I have this? It was the team, everybody realizing what that team could do if they gave them the opportunity to do it. And when they were given the opportunity to do it, they knew how important that opportunity was and they worked together to deliver it. So I think that is fundamentally the key. So don't make something that's going to damage your team or your team's reputation. So don't make that big decision on your own. There is no harm in asking all the people that you've employed because of all the strengths that they've got, what their opinion is. So don't make a, an alien that's going to run around and smash the place up and be a bit of a jerk, as they say. But also, I think, when we look at mistakes that people make, um, I, go, I go back to that bit again about leadership and screaming and, and, and shouting and some support and everything else, because people are going to make mistakes. You know, That's what weaknesses actually end up creating. You try and block them off with your team and you try and do everything else, but actually people will fundamentally just make a mistake. We're, we're all human. Um, and it's then how you deal with them. And that just helps them part. That I said earlier, it, it, it's all that matters. You know, It's not about doing anything else. There is no ridicule, there's no 
I mean, what's the point of doing a review with someone and sitting there and pulling what they've done apart and getting to the conclusion that they need help? Just imagine what that person would feel like if that was the way that you, you could just help them to start with. You can help them in a really relaxed, proactive approach because they're a member of your team. And because you've bought, built that cohesion together, all the rest of the team are there doing it as well. They're all helping them. They're all making sure that whatever mistake they've made doesn't become a big thing. Because it only becomes a big thing if you make it into something that it's not. And allow that person to become the Avenger, you know, because they can make that choice again. Don't shatter their confidence with everything else. Let them stand back up and be proud that they've learned something because you're there to catch them when they fall. And again, it was just another really good gif, so I was quite happy with that. Because a team is about, if they make a mistake, catch them, fix them, help them, put them back up there. They're a really important part of what you do. And it's, trust is, I, I find, one of the things that people are very difficult at, at giving to others. Um, so I've trusted you all today that you now know that I've got a learning disability in dyslexia. Yeah, that has cast a shadow for hundreds of people, thousands of people through their working careers. And people have been embarrassed by something like that. It um, goes with mental health, it goes with lots of other things, yeah? People go through all sorts of different cycles in their life and creating a team is creating a support structure for everybody that has different areas to go through. Um, and this is what you're there to do. So you're not there to ridicule them, you're not there to, to, to scream and shout at them. You're, you're there to, to, to make a difference to their lives. And again, you can only do that if you go back right to the beginning and leave your ego at the door because it, it has no place in, in becoming a leader of what we want to do and I guess on the positive side of having your teams back is that it's really good to sit back and watch people do things differently I can actually say sometimes it's an honor to have people deliver your vision um, and it's never helped make it you've just had a thought um, and sitting back and actually watching your team go off and turn yeah, an idea into some kind of reality um, is absolutely amazing. And you just have to step back and be open-minded and trust them that they're going to get on with it. And you can, again, only do that if you've left your ego at the door. You can only do that if mistakes don't mean anything. They're just learning. They're just someone trying to learn what they're doing and everyone's going to make a mistake. And trust that doesn't matter who it is you're dealing with within your teams and wider if you if you want to go wider outside of just the FM function you know they are um, and have got your back for absolutely the right reasons everybody shows that group cohesiveness is absolutely key to success it's not me just making it up it's scientifically been proven supposedly that that, that is what it is and let's be honest, if you remember this part of the Avengers, they've been beaten up pretty badly by that point. Um, and then the heavens opened and some monsters started flying in. They looked up and thought, okay, how are we going to do this? And it's part of the film where actually you realise that they were really a team. So they'd had all the journey we've just spoken about throughout the film. They'd had fights, they'd had arguments, they'd had jokes that Hawkeye would have been useless. Um, but actually when they all pulled together, they, they suddenly just formed into that circle and saved the world from an alien invasion. And if I look at our buildings and look at FM, I, I don't think we're very far off of this. So many things happen within a business. So many changes take place. Change is consistent. It's probably the only thing that is. Um, and we are a team. doesn't matter what's thrown at us. We have to pull together and... and Work through it, find the solution, help, support, guide. Be there when they actually need us. doesn't matter what it is they're throwing at us because if I haven't got an ego, I'm not emotionally attached to it, I can work with finding the solution. I can make the difference. So I think if we go all the way back to this, it comes back to that comment, one is better than one. And 
it, it's about that one person is better, sorry, one, one team is better than one person. Um, a team is made up of five individuals and they'll always be better than one person as well. But actually, the one team is better than the one person. The one team is better than the five individuals. Our job, and it's the hard part, is turning those individuals from different walks of life, from different areas of um, background with different meanings, different social values and everything else, is turning them into that one FM team to become the FM, not me as a person to become the FM and feel great and wonderful about myself like Mr. Fantastic. Um, it's about how we build, put all of those different cultures and philosophies and people's experiences together. And everybody, I, I say, has a part to, to play in that. Um, and someone turns around and says, well, I'm doing my job. Just quickly change, I'm doing my job, into, I'm doing my role. And actually just suddenly it changes actually the, the conversations that you'll have with someone. So being part of a team means doing your role within that team. Not the role of others, because you can't do them. You know you can't do them because you've worked out your strengths and weaknesses. But it's enabling you to step back and let others shine as well with their key strengths and you know helping them with their key weaknesses so you allow the individuals within the team to have their moment and shine as you'll see when hulk beats up a uh, a god but actually um at the end of the day when they come back in they come back in as one and, a, and as absolutely one team so I guess, from my point of view, this is, I think, because FM has been such a solo role for such a long time, it's something that we're really struggling to, to get together. And I think the people are, that we work with find this a struggle because people have perceptions that they're more important than the cleaners, they're more important than something else. Um, and as if we are going to become an FM function and we're going to become what we want to be, and do the stuff that we want to do. The first thing that, as, a, as a, a leader of that function, I need to do is step aside and allow my team to help me when I need them, to make a difference when they can make a difference. Um, and that, in a small way, I hope today, helps you and your teams look at how you can become an FM function, rather than relying on Mr. Fantastic and his horse come riding in and saves the day every every time. So <laughs> it just was another one I quite liked, but it didn't work. So <laughs> if you could have one superpower, what would it be? <laughs> if I could have one superpower, what would it be? Understanding my customer. Because I go back to because I go back to my Alice in Wonderland one last time, and well I called them Tweedledee and Tweedledum, not for being horrible, but they they change so often um, that it's really difficult to consistently understand it is what they're trying to trying to take that information and turn it into something. So I would have that superpower. Quite like speed, but you know. Thank you.